I don't think my mic's working. Is it working? Y'all hear me? Awesome. Well, uh, I'm Joe. I'm one of my companies is Self State Elite Realty. I've been told throughout my life I got an accent. Um, I'm originally from LA, Lower Alabama. Um, so, real quick, uh, great. There we go. Like most of you, I started off as a little child, as a little kid. Um, I joined the Army right after high school at the age of 17 to get my education paid for. So don't let the accent uh, fool you. My most recent accomplishment is I studied alternative investments at Harvard. I got my MBA in marketing, and my background is heavy in martial arts. That's why I got my MS in exercise science. While I was in the service, I joined a B aviation technician, but my last six years, I was actually a full-time combatives instructor. So I taught soldiers how to clear rooms and fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, much cooler job than real estate. However, uh, real estate has, has changed my destiny and gave me a, a much higher quality of life. And uh, I also studied real estate and construction management at the University of Denver. I've lived in Europe, Asia, Middle East, all kinds of different places. And if you're really interested in construction management, I would highly encourage you to try to go to Germany uh, and you can kind of see where they build things. I mean, they have houses that are older than America over there. So their, their uh, codes and the their standard practices of building is much different than the American way, and it would just really uh, kind of broaden your mind. You can also go to other places and figure out what you shouldn't do, um, you know, like the Middle East and, and places like that. So, yep, I was a little kid, and then the other guy, hopefully he looks familiar. No matter what happens in business or in your business, the marketing department has to stay open. That's how you're going to drive sales and increase your profit. That's, that's on a small scale, large scale. And like I said, I got my MBA in marketing, and some of these things that we're going to go over, I got it from studying. The empirical evidence is there, and then I implemented it into my business, and I spurt growth of about 400% a year. Uh, that's pretty significant, right? I mean, even if we could get 50% a year, that's pretty good. But if you were to incorporate what we're about to go over and actually implement it, uh, like Al Guy said earlier, don't think, just do, uh, something like that. So we got six pillars of an IMC, Integrated Marketing Communications or Campaigns. We're going to get, describe each pillar. We're going to give examples of each pillar. And this stuff works for any business model, but more specifically, any service industry. Uh, I got into real estate strictly as an investor, then progressed, became a real estate agent, then progressed, became a broker, and then I scaled into uh, financial planning to help consult sellers and uh, investors. We're also going to go to pros and cons of each pillar to help grow your business. After this, you should have an outline to design a marketing plan, and then I'm going to give you a couple of gold nuggets. I want to ensure that your time is uh, well invested, right? We should all be biased to ROTI, which is our return on time invested. I do not want to waste your time. I want to give you all a pile of gold nuggets, and then uh, I'll let you be. So what's an IMC? It's just fancy burbers for your mar marketing plan. Uh, the goal of an IMC is to consistently leave a branding message onto the consumer's mind. That's how you become branded, constantly leaving an impression, but it needs, it's most efficient by being done by different avenues, i.e. the six pillars. We're going to use this to create awareness, provide knowledge, obviously create a favorable impression, brand yourself, and then whenever a consumer has the intent to purchase, or i.e. buy real estate, sell real estate, invest in real estate, or invest in index strategies, whatever the case may be, that they use you whenever they have that intent to purchase or sell. So the six pillars is sales promotions. We're going to go over sales promotions. Earlier, uh, one of the guys said something like there's more poor people than rich people or, or something like that. There is a wealth pyramid, like the bottom of the pyramid, and at the bottom, the majority of the global population lives off less than $2,000 a year. And I know this is more of a national approach on real estate, but from a global standpoint, there's a lot of opportunities in those areas where capital is very, very uh, scarce, but labor's high. And there's a lot of studies on that, but you need to have a sales promotion because whenever all the factors are fixed, then the person that's, che that's cheaper provides more value. If you can get the same value for a cheaper price, 
then that's more value. It's some type of discount. It's a promotional offer. It could be a coupon, incentive. Um, and why is it important? It's because the majority of the consumers are price sensitive. And so if you don't use sales promotions or uh, be aware that the majority of the consumer base is price sensitive, you could be really cutting yourself out of a large market share, whether it be in real estate or insurance or investing or whatever the case may be. It can be very attractive to consumers, it can be an incentive for consumers, it can be exciting, sometimes it can encourage a purchase. And you guys get this all the time. We get junk mail, we get coupons, we get uh, all types of things. The cons of it is that it can be costly. Uh, I've donated, I'm part of this program, it's called Homes for Heroes. I don't know if any of you ever heard of it, but people that qualify for the Homes for Heroes program are people that are in the emerg emergency medical services, veterans and active duty military members, teachers, firefighters, police officers, uh, and pe personnel that work in those, those industries. And so whenever they purchase a home, about 0.7% gets rebated back to them. So that can be kind of substantial, these thousands of dollars. And after you do that, you know, many times, that thousands of dollars ends up being six and seven figures. Uh, and so it's kind of costly, but it uh, promotes loyalty. We're going over direct marketing, which, or direct mail, not necessarily the best for the environment, but there is a place for it. Personal selling, that's one-on-one, -on -one, and that's where you have the highest conversion rate. There's only two ways to grow your business. It's increase your conversion rate, increase your network, right? So we should always be biased to increase our network and increase our conversion rate. We increase our conversion rate by getting better at our sales, our scripts, at what we say, because what we say matters. And we also can increase our conversion rate just by becoming more technically competent in our industry, product, and or service. Public relations, got to have selfless service to your community. Um, advertisements, and then we're going to go over digital media, which is, in today's world, probably the, the, the main approach, the newest approach, digital media. Technology is rapidly changing in our environment, and we're constantly expected to do more with less. And so we're going to touch base on that as well. But those are the six pillars, and these, thing, these work synergistically. It's not do one thing. It's do them all, and then like a Venn diagram where they interconnect, that's where you're going to have the highest conversion rate. Direct mail can be customized communications to a targeted audience, like if you have a mail list. Some ideas of this could be a pair professional equity assessment report uh, for a possible client or consumer. It could be a, a comparative market analysis of a home or uh, some investment, a commercial investment, whatever the case may be. You can create one-on-one -on -one personal relationship. There's Whenever we do our marketing, it's really important that we do personable uh, operations instead of just mass blast. And there's some companies, I don't have any association with them, but there's a company called American Lifestyle Magazine. Uh, I think it's done by Reminder, Reminder Media. I also leverage a company called Send Out Cards, where I can take like a picture if I'm with a client and I can put it on a card and send it to them. So a lot of times when I go to their house, I'm actually on the refrigerator. So you best bet that I'm usually getting their business later on. It provides direct contact, obviously. It can, be, can limit waste, but it can also be viewed as junk mail. Unfortunately, there's also printage and postage costs. And with my company of Cell State, Cell State is actually a franchise, and in 2018, we won the Technology Titan Award through NAR, the National Association of Realtors. And these, these platforms, they have all these different marketing centers and design centers to do most of this stuff, just leveraging that, tech, that technology. And there's an example of the magazine, uh, American Lifestyle Magazine. Personal selling. This is where we can have the highest conversion rate. If you're in a service business, it's really important that we talk to people and provide value to them. That's personal selling, one-on-one -on -one or one with a bunch of people. And if you can provide value, you can increase your conversion rate. And it's face-to-face -face marketing. Uh, it's a, the best way to develop relationships, get the appointment. The pros is that you can have immediate contact and feedback, and we have the ability to modify an offer. If I'm talking to someone, and I go through the forward analogy, uh, you know, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, I start talking to someone about their family or occupation. If I hear an opportunity where someone wants to change careers or get into real estate or get into financial planning, 
I have a value proposition for that. But if I talk to them and I hear something else, like they're moving or they need to sell and upsize or downsize, well, I can help you buy or sell a house. Or if they're interested in, in investing in real estate, I can modify my value proposition in accordance to what their needs are. It can be very impactful. Uh, there's a ton of gold nuggets in here. I know everybody in here has something to offer and is, is very valuable. And if you talk to the right person, you know, you can provide substantial value. The cons is that, you know, strangers typically don't just meet you and do business with you. So you might have to develop a relationship first. And then another con is that it's a high cost per individual reach. Whenever you're driving down in uh, Las Vegas, there's advertisements and it's, you know, thousands and thousands of people are seeing this advertisement, but we can't really have a personal conversation with thousands of people a day. So it's a high cost per individual reach. The public relations, like I was saying, have selfless service, um, promote the better good of your community. It's directed uh, to the public, not necessarily yourself. It can be used to develop long-term goodwill. Um, it can also progress a large exposure as well, big events. If you can see that picture, that's, uh, uh, it's called Boo at the Zoo in Colorado Springs. I, I live in Colorado Springs, even though I'm from Alabama. I moved there from Germany so many years ago. And create customer loyalty and again have a big impact. And remember, money follows attention. Just look at the Hollywood stars, right? Movie stars. Money follows attention. That's why it's really important to market. The cons can sometimes be hard for the public to connect the PR event to the services provided. As I had mentioned, Homes for Heroes, I already told you what it, what it is and what it does, but if you were to see a sign of it, you wouldn't understand exactly what it is. I mean, those heroes get homes, Homes for Heroes. So it, it, can, it can be a, a disconnect. So the message may be inconsistent at times. Advertisements, non-personal communication, it's pay to print media communications. That's just an old example right there. Uh, again, you have an advertisement on the road, maybe thousands of people see it a day, but at any given time, only 3% of the market is in the market to have the intent to purchase or sell a, a home. So 97% of the time, the people you're marketing to are not in the market to do business. Talking about real estate. The pros, obviously you have uh, control over a message and it's a, it's a way to remind, inform, and persuade prospects. It leaves a, you know, another impression. So you use advertisements to leave an impression. You use direct mail to leave an impression. You talk to people and you leave an impression. But after so many impressions, you become branded. Whatever your business is, you become branded. So that whenever this consumer, this friend, this relative, or whoever that is in your sphere of influence, whenever they have the intent to do real estate, hopefully you are branded in their mind because you done left so many impressions. Advertisements can be expensive to produce, and as mentioned, they're non-personal. Look at that great advertisement. Digital media. This is like the, the newest thing over the past couple of decades, and what we think is normal in the digital media world, such as our social media platforms of Facebook or uh, what's that, Twitter, Twitter, um, YouTube, and things of that nature. But if you were to go to another country, they have totally different platforms. Like in Thailand, their sense of humor is a little bit different, and so they use different stuff. But anyways, digital media can be your websites. So obviously, we care about search engine optimization. Have you ever heard of click funnels? That's a big thing. Driving traffic, conversion rates, uh, email marketing campaigns. And of course, social media, getting connected to people and consistently posting content that's relevant to your business and people can see that. Again, leaving more impressions so that you can become branded and take care of that business whenever they have the intent to purchase or sell. The pros of digital media is that there's usually metrics. Uh, whenever you mail out, say, a thousand direct mail flyers, you don't know exactly what people did with that or if they just threw it straight in the garbage. Maybe it was junk mail. That's why I don't really do that. That's why I was mentioning do market analysis, professional equity assessment report, something of value to your consumer, or a card with their picture on it, with yourself, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of different opportunities. The cons, spam, and there's a ton of clutter on the internet. There's more content out there than we could ever consume. 
I'm sure most of you know that. Value propositions. So how will you help people? This is what value is. And I'm telling you right here, this right here is a gold nugget for any business. Value equals solutions plus treatment divided by price plus hassle. So if you want to improve your value proposition, you need to improve your solutions. How many problems can you solve or how complex are these problems? We always want to be treating people better and, and if you want to increase your value proposition, you can reduce the price or the hassle on the consumer. That's how you increase your value proposition. Solutions and treatment need to go up, price and hassle can go down. That's how you improve your value. Another gold nugget is retention is cheaper than acquisition. There's some words that created, I don't know how many billions of dollars, and it is, do you want fries with that? I already have a consumer or a client or a customer. They're purchasing a burger, right? I already retain them, and it's cheaper to retain them than it is to acquire a new one. But on top of that, we can get related business sales, i.e. sell fries to the person that's buying a burger or sell a Coke and fries and it progresses to a combo and then the sizes and go on from there. It's really important because this also allows us, I just mentioned, related business sales. But if you take good care of people, you provide substantial value, you also get referrals and then, of course, repeat business. If someone pays you to build their house, and if you're an agent and you take good care of them, then chances are whenever they go to sell, they'll use you. And it's cheaper to retain them and, and take care of those relationships than it is to go acquire a cold lead and nurture that person into becoming a client. So that's the gold nugget. Remember, related business sales, referrals, and repeated business sales. I already mentioned money follows attention, and then this right here, is uh, an infographic of a Venn, Venn diagram. So you have advertisements, direct mail. So if someone's seen your ads and then you mail them every so often, and if they're connected on some type of your social media, maybe your online advertisements or just your social media platforms, you do public relation events, and obviously that right there can be transferred over to your digital media, i.e. you do these events, you post it on your social media, Sales promotion, as mentioned, the majority of the marketplace is price sensitive. So it's important to, to add sales promotions to your, to your marketing models. And then personal selling, we need to meet new people. You can be literally one relationship away that can really change your life. I mean, I've had a relationship where it increased my income 60K a year. Like just one, helping out the right person at the right time and then retaining them. Now if I could just do that repeatedly, then I'd be in good business, right? And then in the middle where all these interconnect because they work together synergistically, that's your integrated marketing campaign. How may I help you? <laughs> Any questions or concerns? There we go. Um, when you're looking at all these um, products and programs and sending out and you know social media and follow up, what do you expect to get return on your dollar? Dollar versus return on investment? Awesome, that's a good question. Be different from every, for everybody. Uh, personally, I get 10. For every dollar I spend, I get 10. And I think if you're not doing that, then uh, your IMC is inefficient. I've been to real estate seminars where someone is up there and they make so much money, but their marketing budget was 50%, right? So they're only making $2 to every dollar that they spend. But to me, it's, it's at least 10 times. I've talked to some people who have optimized click funnels and they're getting about 20. But the, real, the return comes from all of it. It's not just do direct mail or just do digital media. You need to have all that going on and then compare your income to how much you're spending on your entire IMC. And again, to answer your question, if you're not making 10 times it, then you're doing something that's really inefficient in there. Does that answer your question, sir? It does, thanks. Can I ask you one quick follow-up? Absolutely. Okay, so on your lifestyle magazine, I did that years ago when mm -hmm. I first got into real estate. And, uh, and I found that magazine just kind of sat there. And I know it's kind of more of a, they market it as, hey, 
you know, if you're on the coffee table, they're going to think and they're going to remember you. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that a valuable investment? And if so, why? And if not, why? Yeah. It's a little bit of a uh, little bit expensive, but absolutely, because that is part of my direct mail campaign. Uh, and again, it's more complicated than that. I never spent any money on a direct mail campaign and expected anything of it. I never spent money on a advertisement campaign and just expected things to come in from it. I expect money from the overall integrated marketing campaign. So you, you can't just mail something out and think that, oh, I'm just going to get some business. It's an accumulation of the entire plan. And that is something I've seen in our industry that most agents or most service professionals do not understand. They have reminder media come up and say, hey, like you said, you should buy our product. It's going to help grow your business. And so you, you get sold and you do it and then you don't get those returns. But if you add that to your integrated marketing campaign and you as well as implement all the other pillars, then just like in fitness, your business will have to adapt and it's called the said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands. And if you do a whole IMC and they're interconnected, your business will, will grow. The evidence is there, the experience is there, but most people, you know, they, they have, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, they want that instant gratification because those magazines are expensive. Uh, you know, you, you mail out 50 or 100 magazines and you don't get nothing out of it, that right there starts adding up. I mean, it's kind of weird. I do business in Colorado, which is a, a pretty moderate to high real estate market, but I also have some business in that place that I was telling you I was from, you know, Alabama. And like the cost of some of my marketing operations pays for houses down there, you know. But uh, make a long story short, you, you need to do the entire marketing campaign and implement it all together. Just because you direct mail someone does not mean they're going to help, uh, you know, help you grow your business. But if you direct mail them, whether it be the magazine or a market update or a card or a market analysis, but if you direct mail someone on the regular and leave that impression and then you have an advertisement near them where they see that and then they're connected to you on, so, on, on social media and you do public relations events, you just do all those six pillars, that's where your conversion comes from. That's how you leave all the impressions. Never rely on one single uh, marketing avenue. Yes, sir. I think, I think I heard you. Um, how do you manage it? So what I would recommend is, one, you could either, in our business, in the service business, we all got to be marketers. And if you're not a marketer, then you're going to have to hire an independent marketing agent or inside sales agent to do all these things for you. I delegate, we got to be biased to delegating and automating as much as possible. So whenever, I used to, when I first got in the industry, I used to go to Microsoft Word and literally print out a whole bunch of update forms, they had a template in there, and I would stamp them, take my time, stamp them, and send them to my, my database when I first got started. But as I started making money, then I started paying for send out cards, American Lifestyle Magazine, that way that's automated. Um, but to, you know, you, you gotta grow it, and the only way to do it is either you're gonna have to learn it or hire someone to take care of it for you. But there's so many tools and resources to make this stuff uh, fairly simple. Whenever it comes to email marketing, our, our firm, Sales State, we have this technology where we can do all this stuff from like one platform just about. However, there's plenty of other companies out there that you could also leverage whenever it comes to these things such as MailChimp or pay a social media marketing agency or another, like I said, an independent marketing agent to take care of this stuff for you. Um, but yeah, so that, that's like your two options. You either gotta implement it, figure out how to automate it and delegate it and be efficient with it, or just pay someone to take care of this stuff for you but after you see these six pillars and you understand that this is what needs to be done, then hopefully you can manage a marketer to make sure they're doing the right thing. And if you're not making 10 times your marketing budget, you're probably doing something wrong. Hey Joe, my name's Nate. I was curious, I had two questions. First, for the sales promos, mm -hmm. what kind of offers are you putting out there that are working for you right now? Perfect, there's, a, there's so many opportunities, you know, and I don't wanna get like, paralysis by over analysis, but me personally, to answer your question, I do that Homes for Heroes program that I was telling you, so 0.7% of the purchase price gets rebated back to the client, and that 0.7% comes directly out of my commission check, so that's one of them. Another idea could be offering a home warranty program. 
Uh, I mean, there's, there's a ton of things, you know, tacos and tequila. Uh, there's a bunch. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different opportunities, but to answer your question, those are the two that I, I use most often and I see other agents use in my market. Awesome. And then for the ads, I was curious what channels uh, are working really well for you right now? Again, the, the channel is the whole campaign. There's, you know, uh, I do advertisements, and again, the cost of those advertisements, I could buy real estate assets in Alabama. Um, and out of my advertisements, very, I've had like one person call me, and they needed help with a rental, and I don't make a lot of money off a of rental unless they're my tenants. I never got anybody to call me off my advertisements, but I'll tell you what, I can't tell you how many times my past clients, my past friends, and people that know me or know of me have taken pictures of my picture on the advertisement and sent it to me. And whenever that happens, I'm like, I'm leaving impressions, okay? And I know it's kind of complex because there, there's six of them, but again, do, don't, don't do one thing and think, oh, I'm gonna get something off this. You could, but I would never rely on it. The, the money comes from the synergistic, synergistic approach of an entire integrated marketing campaign. This information comes from Harvard Business Review, um, and I tell, I, I was tell my agents, you know, I've done did the work for you. I studied marketing for years, and that's the gold nugget is the entire IMC. Most marketers know of it. I know agents that know of it, but they don't implement it. And then once I implemented it, man, business just took off. Just took off. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I can answer your question. Was, uh, that's, a com that's a complicated one. The, the biggest thing is you gotta understand that your database, especially if you're working in a local market, like the Venn diagram I showed, these things have to be connected. And I've wasted you know, tens of thousands of dollars on marketing. Uh, so you need to position yourself to where the consumers that you're targeting or your database is getting hit with all these connections. So they need to be connected to you on social media. They need to you know, be in the market or the local area where your advertisements are. Of course, you can grow and scale and, and go farther, but especially if you're starting off because you can make a lot of money being hyper-local. Um, and then on top of that, past that, be, be yourself and grow your brand. A lot of people know me as an MMA guy. I'm actually, uh, another thing I use is I'm a chronic skin cancer patient and people know me, people know my brand because I post it and it's uh, my life and it's unique to me. But I don't, I, honestly, I don't even know what your question was, man. You, you said like, <laughs> you said a lot of stuff, but connect the IMC and ensure that those, those individuals are getting hit with all those pillars. Um, one way I wasted money is I designed an IMC, I got advertisements in a downtown area, I got emails going out to my people. These people uh, are usually around downtown and they, they see my advertisements and all this stuff. And then someone sold me and I had an advertisement like up north, close to, closer to like Denver. So I had this, this advertisement uh, operation up there, then everything else was down here. And so whoever was up here, they just got one pillar, and of course I got nothing out of it, which is expected, right? We, we don't just put up an advertisement and say, oh, people are just gonna be blowing me up, wanting to give me money. People do business with people they know, like, and trust, and it's not even the best person that, that gets the business or the best business that gets the business, it's the known business that gets the business. And that's why marketing is so important. I hope I answered your question, man. I, don't, I have a question. For you. You, is, that, is that okay in a way? Oh, yeah, oh, I just, I post, uh, you know, I, things that go on in my life, it's, it's my brand, I got my own website, yada, 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 and uh, people that know me know me, and people that don't know me, and they're, if they're connected to me, they, they see my story, they see my brand, and all these are the same message, it's the fighting agent, it's the real estate, the broker, the closings, 
the World Real Estate Conference and all the other conferences that we attend. I mean, it's, it's my brand, and I, I post it. And it's all consistent with who I am, you know? Uh, perfect. Well, a lot of questions. There's a, I have a question. Oh, perfect. Yes, ma'am. Um, what percentage uh, would you recommend for your marketing budget overall? And then on the, each individual categories, were they equally spread or would you favor one over another or more mm -hmm. yeah. heavily? So I would, I would run with uh, 10% and I wouldn't uh, consider returns for a year. So anytime you, you, if you have your business and it makes income, but here's, it depends on what your goals are. You want to knock it out of the park, then whatever money your business makes, just dump it back in there, right? Some people that have like massive, wildly successful businesses, their marketing budget may be 40% of their income. But me personally, I just, when I got into it, you know, got to take some money, pay Uncle Sam, IRS, we love that. Um, and then take 10% and dump it into your, your marketing campaigns. And then the amount that you dump into which area is really dictated upon your, your personality. Uh, me, I just focus on automating and delegating as much as possible. But you could get a higher conversion rate by buying someone dinner than probably sending out magazines. But it's all down to your, your personal approach. And yeah, that's the best I can answer that. It's really your, your personal approach there, but it's just really important that you get all six pillars, something going on in there, and then you can start start your measurements. But I would say 10%, but if you want to grow faster and you know shoot for the stars, dump all your money in your marketing. So you're saying 10% minimum that you take? Me personally, yes, but you know some people do less, some people do more, but personally I say 10. Same thing when you, if you do a good flip, you fix up some old infrastructure, same thing, you usually make 10 times whatever you uh, put into it, right? Um, so in the business and marketing, 10 times your, your marketing budget and take 10% of your money invested in marketing. But if you wanna grow faster, stronger, try to live off of other means and just whatever your business does, just dump it back into the business and then that's how you can really design and develop a wildly successful business in a short amount of time. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So one last question I think we, we have here, for me at least, um, value proposition. Mm -hmm. So that solution there is uh, very vital because we're all providing very good uh, services. And for engineering, our solutions are usually very complex uh -huh. and a lot of times engineers are underpaid. And or we try getting the value for what we're bringing to the table and the compensations, it, uh, it gets sticker shock a lot of times. So how can we prime our clients um, and get them ready for that sticker shock when they may be a new developer or we're dealing with residential and they've never done construction and they see these numbers and uh, it, it kind of scares them sometimes. So how do you bring value to the table to get the compensation for what you deserve? Yeah, so, uh, perfect. I wish these were easy, easier answers. But anyways, um, that comes down to, to your sales training, you know? If you, I mean, if you're an engineer, you're technically competent, you solve very complicated problems, and the market is going to bear a certain price, and you have competitors. But to really stick out, you have to grow your marketing, and then to, to address your problem that you mentioned, it, I think that comes down to sales training. Uh, I'm not an engineer. Um, because that stuff's too complicated. So um, I, think, I think really getting sales training and setting the expectations up front might help increase your conversion rate. But you know, you're gonna get paid in correlation with the amount of value you bring to the marketplace and it can be competitive. And as an engineer, you solve very complicated problems and hence you should be compensated well. But you also have competition, and then in our business, we're in a relationship-based business, human beings are usually illogical and irrational and or they're price sensitive. So in your business model, maybe you have to get more efficient with your operations to cut your own cost, 
They're, they're, like this, this is a very, very dynamic question, but sales training, optimize your own operations, but I think sales training is probably the best approach. It's really figuring out what to say, and whenever it comes to engineering, I really don't know what to say. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I totally understand. Does I that help some, that. though? It, it does, and uh, it's funny because the different markets are completely different. For residential, they get sticker shock because they've never done it. Then we have these experienced developers who have done huge developments throughout the world, and then when I have a five-hour lunch meeting with them, they're like, oh, you're just drawing a, a picture on, on this. I can do this in five seconds. And they're like, this is like $500 worth of service. I'm like, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they know the true price. So when they see it, they totally agree. And they're like, yeah, I like this. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to prime me um, and say that we're just drawing photos. So we really have to learn how to add that value that we're bringing, I guess. Yeah, uh, you know, your value is not you just drawing a photo. It's you went to school and however many years and decades of experience and education and accomplishments in your field that led you up to the point and drawing the photo is probably just a small slither of a much bigger picture that you probably need to paint for them. Anything else? We are actually out of time for Joseph, oh. unfortunately. I know. 